For four years, the Soviet Red Army fought against Nazi Germany. After difficult fighting and millions dead, the Soviets were victorious on the Eastern Front. But victory over Germany in 1945 would not have happened without the enormous support from an unprecedented program later forgotten and obscured by Cold War rhetoric. This is the story of American Lend-Lease to the Soviet Union, and this is World War II in two. I'm Mike Bell at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. Before America's entry into the war, President Franklin Roosevelt asserted that the country's industrial might would become an arsenal of democracy. American production would meet not only U.S. military needs, but under Lend-Lease, America would supply equipment and materiel to Britain and all countries facing Axis aggression. After Nazi Germany invaded in 1941, Lend-Lease was extended to the Soviet Union too. In all, about 23% of the total program went to the USSR. Between 1942 and 45, massive shipments included 400,000 trucks and jeeps, 14,000 aircraft, 13,000 tanks, and 72,000 radio sets. America also sent a staggering 4.5 million tons of food and nearly 3 million tons of petroleum products, as well as millions of rifles, blankets, uniforms, and boots. These critical supplies arrived at key moments. In late 1943, Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin already judged that Lend-Lease had been decisive. Without it, Stalin said, we would have lost the war. Besides equipment and weapons, there were explosives and ammunition for Soviet guns and aluminum, steel, and raw materials for Soviet factories. Americans supplied machinery and raw materials fed Soviet production. To boost output, the U.S. sent 38,000 legs. To meet the demand for tires, the United States sent a tire factory. For clothing, over 100,000 tons of American cotton. American aid to the Soviet rail system was nearly 1,200 locomotives, 11,000 rail cars, and more than 600,000 tons of trash. Ultimately, Lend-Lease was decisive. At Yalta, Stalin praised Lend-Lease as one of FDR's most remarkable and vital achievements in keeping the Allies in the field against Hitler. After the war, Nikita Khrushchev agreed, noting, if the United States had not helped us, we would not have won the war. Considering the contribution of American equipment, trucks, and radios to the Soviet offensives of 1944 and 45, he asserted, our losses would have been colossal because we would have had no maneuverability. Khrushchev offered, we shouldn't boast that we vanquished the Germans all by ourselves. 